Hello, my name is Elizabeth. The stories that you're going to hear is ones that I had when I was a child. Sausage Rolling Pin by Mark Crees from a tale told by Elizabeth. My auntie Gwen and Uncle Joe lived in the old rectory at St Uni. They had seven little children, my seven cousins. When Auntie Gwen died, suddenly, they all had to be looked after. My uncle couldn't do it on his own. So we moved into the rectory, my mum, my dad and the five of us. What a household that was. All of us children living in a big, spooky old house right opposite the church. It was a lot of work for my mother, I can tell you. Too much work, but she did it, and with a good heart. Charles, my little cousin, was always the cheeky one, always trying to take more than his fair share at dinner time. My mum used to do a lot of baking, and once she cooked us these huge, delicious sausage rolls, and she played a crafty trick on Charles. She took a wooden rolling pin and covered it in pastry and baked it, and then put it on the plate with the rest of the baking. Charles quickly grabbed the biggest sausage roll he had ever seen, but he had the shock of his life when he bit into it. A sausage rolling pin. I'm uh, John Gilbert. I was asked to uh, give some of my experiences to the young people in uh, the above school. I, I really enjoyed doing it. But the biggest joy was the fact that they responded to much that I wrote. Without a Dicky Bird by Jane Pugh From a tale told by John Cinema on Saturday, church on Sunday and piano lessons in the week. At school, John was a good boy and he liked his teacher, Miss Lord. They had a Cornish range and a gramophone they didn't use. His friend Leslie was a naughty boy. He let off a starting pistol inside the classroom, and when they were out walking the school perimeters without a dicky bird, he lobbed a rock straight through the shoemaker's window. It's a wonder they survived. At 16, he was a working tradesman, because all the grown men were at war. Cycling home from work, he liked to call in at the library. Restful books and a world beyond. American servicemen camped nearby with the black soldiers segregated from the white. He's not forgotten that. He's not forgotten anything. He remembers his mother alone to run a small holding and raise five children, carefully repairing his one good jacket so he could go courting. He remembers too the day his father died. Hello, my name is Margaret. I've been writing to children in school and they've been responding very well to me, telling them stories about my grandfather and how he had inspired me to help people, working people, to get rights. Mother by Sarah Connors From a tale told by Margaret Margaret's grandfather was a miner at South Crofty and told many stories of the harsh working conditions at the mine. One of his tales had a deep impact on Margaret's life. After a gruelling shift, the men would come up from the mine caked in red dust. Her grandfather campaigned for showers to be installed. After many years fighting for this, a single tin bucket, levied by a rope, was provided. Despite the makeshift showers being freezing cold and ineffective, the mine captain insisted that all the men show their gratitude by lining up and doffing their caps to him in thanks. Margaret thought this outrageous, and the story never left her. She dedicated her life to fight for the rights of workers, becoming the first female representative of a National Trade Union Committee. At the age of 55, she studied at Ruskin College, Oxford, being the oldest student in the halls of residence. She travelled the world as a trade union rep, tirelessly campaigning for the rights and safety of workers. She is affectionately referred to as 
mother. What a woman. These stories were told as part of the Pens, Paper, Envelopes project, an intergenerational letter-writing project for the writer's block, read by Zoe Waters, Tom Hale and Connie Crosby, recorded by Phil Innes. <laughs>